Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to take a quick look at Crossmix OS for the TrimUI Smart Pro. Crossmix is based on the stock TrimUI firmware, but it adds a whole bunch of new features, apps and functions, as well as new emulators. It's kind of meant to be an upgraded stock rather than an entire new replacement. And yeah, it's completely different, and it completely changed the TrimUI Smart Pro. For example, it has built-in scraping now to download all of your box art, which is just a fantastic addition, as adding box art without it being built in is kind of a pain. You can now hide systems that just don't have ROMs or games inside of them, and it cleans up your list quite a bit. You can do screen recording if you want to for whatever reason. Moonlight is still here and Portmaster is now here, making it easier for you. There's also Random Game Picker, which I can't remember if it exists on stock, but it's here either way. Then there's a whole bunch more with system tools. You can easily enable auto load state to resume your games from the latest save state. Or you can adjust overlays and so much more. There's a lot more here. On the network side, you can now access your device remotely using HTTP file server. But, and my favorite addition, is there is now sync thing integration. So you can sync your games across multiple devices. And personally, I'm doing that with my RG35XX SP running MUOS, and I'm syncing that to the TrimUI Smart Pro. Crossmix also has over-the-air updating now, so you don't have to worry about manually updating anymore. You just update through the device and it's over the air, which is fantastic. On the performance end, the dev added standalone emulators for Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and more, leading to better performance in some games, or in scenarios like N64, games actually boot now where they didn't boot on stock OS. There's so many more settings and changes as well, and I'll leave a link to the GitHub so you can check it all out and read all of the changes that are there. Okay, so let's talk about how to install this. First, you're going to need a new branded SD card. We're not gonna be using the one that you have right now. Put that off to the side, just in case you ever wanna go back. A branded 128 or 256 gigabyte SD card would work just fine for what this plays size-wise. You're also going to need a branded SD card reader to connect the SD card to your PC. All of this is in my description if you need recommendations. First up, we're going to download a tool called Rufus, and you can download the portable option. And that lets us format the SD card as FAT32. With your SD card connected to your PC, open Rufus and then select non-bootable under boot selection. Scroll down and make sure that file system is FAT32 or large FAT32. Press start and let it finish. Go ahead and download the latest Crossmix OS release from the GitHub. It's under assets and it's the zip file. Copy that zip file over to the root of the SD card that we just formatted. Then right click, Extract all, and you want to select your SD card drive so that it extracts to the root of the SD card. If you don't, it's going to create a Crossmix folder, and then all of the folders that we need will be inside. But we need all of those folders to be on the root of the SD card, so just follow these instructions. The extraction is going to take a good amount of time. It took about 15 to 20 minutes for me. So just be patient, and if it asks to replace any files, do so. When it's all done, the root of your SD card should look like mine. And you can go ahead and delete the original zip file afterwards. Now let's just go ahead and we can load up our ROMs and BIOS files. If you want, you can grab all of this off of your previous SD card, and then just put them on here. If you have no idea what ROMs or BIOS files are, I'll leave a link to a video in my description that talks about it. For BIOS files, they go right into the BIOS folder. If you want to use the ones from stock, they're located in the RetroArch, dot RetroArch, system folder. And you can copy all of the files in there to here. 
For ROMs, they just go into the ROMs folder and in their respective system folder. If you want to use the ones that came with the stock card, most of the ROM folders are the same, except PPSSPP is now PSP, Opera is Panasonic, and Pico 08 is Pico. Personally, I'm using my own curated ROM library for this video. Once you've moved everything over, eject and insert your SD card into your device and turn it on. Depending on what your firmware was before, Crossmix might update when you turn it on, so just let it do its thing. You can also know that it's working because you'll see the Crossmix background. And we're on the right OS. Just wait for everything to finish and for it to load up. So right off the bat, let's head over to apps and you can see some new changes here and some old items. FN key settings is the typical settings that was on stock and we're not gonna touch any of this. There's an awesome over the air update application here to update Crossmix OS as it gets updates. This is a game changer for making things just so much easier for updating. Obviously, since we just updated, there's nothing to check here. Next, we have Emu Cleaner, and this cleans your emulators page to only show systems that have games for them. So it just makes things nice and tidy. There's a file manager, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's screen recording for some reason. I guess some people will use this, but hey, it's there. Portmaster integration for those that want to play ports on here. There's a random button to load up and play any random games. But the big thing is system tools, so let's jump into that. There are a whole bunch of settings on this page. Most are pretty self-explanatory. If you jump into emulators, you can enable or disable auto load state, or you can remove or add overlays. Auto load state is enabled by default but overlays are also enabled by default, and I don't like overlays. So I'm gonna go change that now, and I'm gonna change it to no overlays, max ratio, which basically means it'll keep the aspect ratio of the system. This is all personal preference, of course. You can change the LEDs to other things if you want. Then we head over into network, and you can enable SFTP and sync thing and more, if you know what these do. Personally, I use SyncThing religiously, so I'll be setting all of that up and doing it on my end, but there's a lot of useful network additions here. There's some themes, but I really haven't touched any of those. And then in tools, there's a few things here, but once again, haven't had to touch these. In user interface, you can change the default tab that's displayed on startup and the best section. Let's back out now and then we'll head over to Scraper. There is built-in scraping in this OS. You can change the configuration and have it scrape in the background if you'd like. And there's other options. Then just go ahead and one by one select each system to scrape them. I didn't find a scrape all button, but I could have missed it. If you go ahead and check out the GitHub page, you can see all of the hotkeys available to you for the operating system to just make your life easier. And there's also a small frequently asked questions section for any issues. I talked before about new standalone emulators for Dreamcast and Nintendo 64, so let me show you that now. Stock is notorious for some Nintendo 64 games just not loading, and Mario Tennis is a perfect example. You can see that it just doesn't boot. However, if we push X on the device to load up some other emulator options, you can see that we have a list to choose from. If I go ahead and choose Rice standalone, it boots up although it is in 16x9. Either way, it at least loads. Now, Mario Tennis is a bad example because it isn't really playable. No handheld besides the Retroid Pocket 2S can play Mario Tennis in the under $100 category, but it at least boots now and that's better than it was before. Now, one thing that's unfortunately still present in some systems is shaders. I hate shaders, and so the first thing I did was remove them, and here's how. Jump into any game that has them, like Game Boy Advance games for example. Push the menu button on the bottom left, advanced menu, scroll down to shaders and disable video shaders. Go back and scroll up to overrides and save content directory overrides. You're going to have to do this for every system that has them, but it's the same steps for each. If you want to log in for retro achievements, 
Head to Apps, RetroArch, move over one, then scroll down to Achievements. Enable Achievements and then log in with your username and password. Back out and head back over to the left, head to Configuration File and save current configuration. That's it, enjoy your retro achievements. Otherwise, honestly, that is all you need to do. Enjoy this supercharged stock operating system with a whole bunch of better features and more advanced menus and all of that. This is just a much better experience. That's gonna be it for this one. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.